Growing up, I had dreams of being an amazing saxophone player. I started playing when I was in the fifth grade. From fifth grade all the way through eighth grade, this was what I wanted to do. It felt like this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Day in and day out, I would play that saxophone. I would go over my scales. I would try to be the best saxophone player that I could be. And then one day, I just sort of felt like it fizzled out. It wasn't something that I loved to do. I actually got distracted by playing football and playing outside with my friends. And then that saxophone dream sort of just fizzled out. It was something that I wasn't passionate about anymore. It was something that I once did, but then I put down. In fact, I just recently went back to my parents' house and uh, I saw that old saxophone case and the old saxophone, and it's just there collecting dust. It's funny how quickly a dream can fade. Has something like that ever happened to you? You had a big dream, idea, or goal of something that you wanted to become great at. You even started and put in the work, but then you forgot about it. Maybe it wasn't playing a saxophone. Maybe you wanted to start your own YouTube channel. You vlogged an entire day, but then you were too tired to actually edit and upload it. You said you'd do it tomorrow, but eventually too many days passed and you forgot about it. Or maybe you're an athlete and you had goals to level up your skills this year or to get in even better shape over the summer, but things didn't go as planned. Too many skipped workout days passed and eventually you just feel disconnected from the passion you had around your original goals. Or maybe for you, you were going to work really hard on your grades this year. You wanted to raise your GPA and boost your chances of getting into your dream college. You had a whatever it takes mentality going into the year. But here you are, months later, not exactly where you wanna be. The quickest way for something to go from super important to kinda of forgot about it is for it to be out of your sight. Out of sight, out of mind, is a real thing. And this just isn't true about activities or goals we have. Think about it when it comes to people, like your friendships. When we lose connection with our friends, we sometimes fill our heads with ideas about things that may have changed since we last saw them. Are we still friends? Are they mad at me for something I said or did? Did they replace me with someone else? Sometimes friendships slowly drift apart. We begin to question things and doubt the friendship, and it all starts with a lack of interaction or time together. What happens with us and a dream we want to accomplish but end up abandoning is the same thing that happens with friends we want to stay close to but end up drifting apart from. We have a goal, we have an end in mind, but without making a habit out of the work to make the goal a reality, the dream dies, the friendship fizzles, things just don't turn out the way we want. Because without making a habit out of spending time with the people we actually care about, or without making a habit out of practicing the skills we need to make the dream come true, we don't accomplish what we want. And here's the thing, many of you may have just started an exciting new relationship with God, or maybe you have been following Jesus for a while, but you don't want to drift apart from him. Or if I had to guess, I would bet some of you have had the same sort of experience with God already. The relationship fizzles. The goal of feeling close to him is never reached. And maybe you have found yourself wondering why that is. Is it because God is invisible or feels far away? Or it seems strange to try to figure out a way to talk to someone that you don't have a text thread with. Or maybe you even wonder if you did something wrong to cause that distance. Whatever idea you have of what you think a relationship with God looks like, maybe it just isn't happening. And it feels a bit like the goal you abandon and the friendship that just isn't the same. And the question you are asking is, is this the way it has to be? When he was on earth, Jesus had a moment when he was surrounded by several religious experts. They loved asking him questions, sometimes because they wanted to learn from him, but mainly because they wanted to trip him up. They wanted to catch him saying something that would cause Jesus to lose his influence and ruin his reputation. At one point, one of the religious leaders asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was. These religious leaders thought they understood God and his law better than anyone. They were in no danger of forgetting about God. Following God's rules were front and center of their entire lives. And now, in front of a crowd of people, they asked Jesus, 
Out of the hundreds of laws and commandments, which would he make number one? Jesus responded with an answer that every one of the teachers and experts of the law would have known by heart because they'd heard it their entire lives. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus tells us what he wants us to do. Love an invisible God with everything we have. But he doesn't say how at that moment. Later, Jesus uses an illustration to help explain that. John, one of Jesus' followers and friends, records a big conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Jesus knew that while he was visible to his friends at that moment, he wouldn't be much longer. Eventually, he would return to heaven and no longer walk on earth. It didn't mean that Jesus would no longer exist. He would just no longer be visible in the way they had gotten used to. With that in mind, Jesus gives them an illustration. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, back then, agriculture or farming was a common and popular as cell phones are today. It was a part of everyday life. Everybody knew about farming, vines, and plant life. They would have immediately known that the branch of a plant can only create fruit if that fruit is connected to the nutrients the vine provides. So let's put it in terms we would use today. It would be like saying that a power cord gets the electricity it needs from the power outlet to give power to whatever is plugged into it. The verse written a little differently would go something like, I am the power outlet. You are the cord. If you remain in me and I in you, you will power many devices. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Most of us have things at home that need to be plugged into an outlet in order to work. Televisions, hair straighteners, coffee pots, the list could go on for days. Think about the incredible things you can do and all the people you connect with through your phone or your Xbox. If your Xbox is connected to an outlet, it can do wonders. If your Xbox is unplugged, it's a pile of metal. If your phone is connected to an outlet, it's the single most innovative piece of technology of all time. If your phone has no battery left, it has all the potential in the world, but that's all it is, potential. If your device is connected to an outlet, it has true power. If your device has no electricity, it's dead. This is a lot like you and your relationship with God. You have so much power and so much potential to do so many things. You can love your friends. You can serve your family. You can make wise decisions. You can pursue God's plan for your life. You can change the world right where you are simply by living the life God has called you to live. You can do all of these things and more in your everyday life if you are plugged in. That's when you begin to bear fruit which is equal to your devices being powered up. When you're connected to God, you get to live as the single greatest creation of all time. God said so when he made you. If you aren't connected, you have all the potential in the world, but there's something standing in the way. You are still the greatest creation of all time, but there's a gap between where you are and where you could be. We need to stay connected to God to know God, and we need to know God in order to love God more. And loving God, that's what Jesus said was the most important commandment of all time. In order to love God with everything we are, we need to be connected to him with all that we are. Think of it this way. Connecting with God helps us know him better. Connecting with God will help you know him better. But connecting with an invisible God will take some effort. It will take making connection a habit. Loving God with all our heart, our mind, soul, and strength means that we're putting in the effort over time to make it happen. So how do we do that? Well, there are a lot of ways to connect with God. So we're going to start with one simple idea. Spend time with God. Over the next few weeks, we're going to talk more specifically about ways that you can spend time with God. But this week, I want to give you a challenge to spend 15 minutes with God each and every day. Doing what? Here are some ideas. 
listen to worship music, and think about God while you do. Go for a walk and pray, talking to God about things you are grateful for or need help with. Write down some prayers, thoughts, or questions in a journal. Read devotionals on YouVersion. Pick one and go for it. Or come up with some ideas as a small group on how to build habits to get to know God in everyday ways, whatever you decide. It doesn't have to be perfect or feel magical. There's one goal and one point of spending time with God, to get to know Him better by connecting with Him, like connecting with a power source to begin to build into our lives the space for a habit of time spent with God. Just know, whatever you decide to try, it may look different for different people. Because just like there are endless ways that you connect with your friends, seeing them at school, hanging out on the weekends, commenting on their social media, there are endless ways to connect with God. The point isn't how you do it, it's that you do it. Over and over again, making a habit, a pattern, out of time spent with Him. Getting to know and connecting with a God we can't see will take time. It will take creating a habit over time before it starts to feel easier and more natural. But I love this phrase out of the book of James in the New Testament. Come near to God and He will come near to you. There is no magic formula about this. It's just taking the time to make a habit. Over time, we will find ourselves closer to God and he will feel closer to us. Even though God is with us all the time, the habit of spending time with him will eventually bring a feeling of closeness we maybe haven't experienced before. Imagine for a second, if you made a habit out of connecting with God, what if because of this habit, you felt comfortable with him, closer to him? What if in the process of spending time with him, you really began to notice yourself loving God with more of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. How cool would it be to feel like you were connected to the power, presence, and love of God? Here's the thing, God wants you to make a habit of spending time with Him, of getting close to Him, not because He wants to control you, but because He wants to be close to you. He's a good dad who wants a good relationship with his kids, and that includes you. Your small group is a great place to talk about making a habit out of spending time with God. You can verbalize your struggles and frustrations. You can share ideas that have worked for you. And you can hear from a small group leader who has spent years learning to connect with God in their own way. Connecting with God helps us know Him better. And small group is another great place to connect with God.